Well, yeah, Danzy scored a run on Tuesday, and before the game, you talked about how he's getting to know his new double play partner. How long does that take? I feel like you guys are the perfect people to tell us how long that takes because they call it a relationship and an art for a reason. Take us through it. Yeah, it's funny, Lauren. I read an article today. Eric Nays sent it to me talking about Ron Washington being out on the field before yesterday's game with Robinson Cano and working on kind of the hands and everything that the Braves do. Can, can I start? Uh, because first I want to just point out one thing right here. Years ago when we talked about relationship, I had a pretty good one with my brother. And when I used to go to the ballpark and watch him play, Detroit was in town. And he goes, dude, don't watch me play short. Watch Alan Trammell play short. <laughs> and I use him in the same kind of sentence with that because I think his feet and his release point and his carry reminds me of Alan Trammell an awful lot. I think his feet are always in good position, and he seems to always get here when he throws across the diamond. And kind of jumping off that, I did Port St. Lucie. I did the Mets 30-30 last year, and uh, this year, this past year, and watched Robinson Cano when he was there at the beginning of the season with the Mets. No one smoother at picking the baseball and flipping it to second base than Robinson Cano. But I was saying to myself, the toughest thing for me to do as a utility player, I came up, I didn't play one inning, one inning, high school, college, minor leagues, every inning was at shortstop, every one. It's a different world on the other When side. I went to second base after Raphael Fercal showed up and Glenn Hubbard took me on the backfields to try and teach me how to be a utility guy, I felt like fish out of water, right. gangly. I'm like, wow, this is not built for, for me. The, the reason I kind of jump on that is because when, when I knew you were coming on, I'm like, when we have Billy, we got to teach, man. So I wanted to go over, like, all the things we did on the backfield, turning a proper double play as a second baseman and how you build a relationship with your shortstop. Because there was a play, Cano gets picked up Correct. two nights ago with Guillaume hitting that I think had him and Dansby had a spring training together. That thing gets jumped. They may super have too. Quick. And can, do we have that right away? Because we're going to dive I, in. I, I think we're going to start with your boy, Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. Oh, sweet! Can we can we can we get into the tape? I did not know we were doing this, so that's good. I mean, it's grainy, but okay. So I wanted to focus on the different ways to present a baseball to your shortstop from second base because not everybody in there's you and your brother. Yeah, that's not, um, that's not <laughs> Trammell or Whitaker. Kind of jumping off this. What worked for Billy and what worked for me were two different things. And you have to build that 20 minutes of ground balls every day on the backfield, working with not only your brother, working with every shortstop. Okay, run that back for me real quick and Billy cut me off. See, I would I, never attempt this. See, but I, I love this because to me, the, the, counter, the counter is a weapon if you're a second baseman. And I think the coolest thing about this counter, and what that means is thumb down and I'm doing this, and I'm going to flip this to you. Oh. But if I do this and I keep my thumb down and my fingers up like I'm going to smack you right in the face, that's where the ball usually goes. We get in trouble sometimes when the wrist goes this way, because then I yank and it. And that's what I would do. Right. And I learned that on the backfield. I'm like, wow, I'm wristy, like I'm throwing an option in it's, football. It's this. I eliminated that. So when I was in that situation, I was hee hee. I was coming at you here, or I was but but the, but the sound effect hee hee yeah. doesn't work from that he distance. You can't reach from there. Now the counter can, and the beautiful thing about this, when we play this, watch out two v one. This release is quicker than this release, yes. the wraparound. And then look how Correa comes to the bag and he sees it coming. It might not have the pace that this one has, but the release is quicker. He's setting up the double play before the ball even gets to him because he knows this is an automatic out at second. Play that, please. I mean, I mean, he had he he read it and he just attacked it because it was easy for him. I look at that. Okay, so <laughs> that's a pause little, this real that's quick a little cute because you talk about working on the backfields right. and coaching the 12 U's and the Ripken way and everything that goes into it. Not everybody's got to going to feel comfortable doing it one way. So when I was at second base to funnel the ball to my belt and present it like this on a platter when I was close enough was the easiest way for me to do it. To think of going like this, it didn't work, so I eliminated it. For Billy Rip, 
He lived and died yeah. on this. So, so before we start this, because you said one thing, I presented this. Key thing for me, as the double play partner, you have to show your double play partner the ball. Yeah. That's what presenting is. The more you show it to him, the more comfortable he is. And I think this is what I want to talk about in this play, because I'm not so sure Dan Dansby's Swanson. like, I don't know where this is coming from. Thank you. So let's play it and we'll see the play. And I'm not sure the answer to this because he got so close to second and we see the play. He ended up beating it's it out. It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. But we'll watch this replay. Stop, please. All right. He's leaning over. He backhanded it. But watch this in slow motion as the glove flip comes this way. You don't see the ball. 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 And then you see it. So it's Dansby's like a magic going. Trick. It's like, <laughs> Dansby's like, it's second. Well, where's this thing coming? And the fact that it was actually a perfect feed. He didn't know it was going to be a perfect feed. And that's the part of presenting it to him and showing it to him. Run this real quick. That's a okay. beautiful thing right that there. That is a beautiful thing right there. So kind of jumping off the different ways, double play, Jeff McNeil. This is what felt comfortable to me. Other guys would almost play that off to the side, give a pirouette, and throw to second base, get a little bit more arm strength. What I like too about that, can you back that up please uh, for me? Show it right before Lindor catches it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Freeze. Look at him. Right, he so is what, a big see, fundamental. What Lindor. I like about this is he's already here. Yeah. What I didn't like about Dansby the other day, he got three inches from the bag and he didn't touch it. And then when he does catch it and he did this, I didn't like that. There's nothing wrong with this. My little saying is if you got good feet, don't cheat. He's got good feet. So he's already set up. So when he catches this, this one's going to go there. That one's going to go there towards first base. And his release point is perfect. Watch his right foot. Oh, he didn't even push off. That's good. But he just kind of spin and got himself in a direction. The other thing I'd like to talk about, too. There's Perry Field and, and Bobby Witt. Freeze that for a minute so I can talk a little bit. What I also like is the double play feed conceptually should be an uphill feed. Yes. So when I catch it, and even if I do this, I'm still throwing it from here up to your face. Yep. And if I'm doing the counter, I'm going uphill. If we're at short and we go to catch a ball, that ain't no good. That ain't no good. So this uphill feed right here, and even though Bobby was covering a distance to get to second, the, the flip was quick enough, and then he's athletic enough where he can do that. So that's pretty cool. But uphill feeds present the ball, I think, are the fundamentals. However you do it, I think is up to the individual. Yeah. Like you said when you went over there, you either jumped or you turned around to do that. For some reason, I don't know if I felt long, if I felt like I was a giraffe on ice. None of that ever happened to me. And to your point about playing short all those years, my minor leagues, I was a shortstop. One year they said, okay, you're gonna play second. We didn't have a whole lot of roving stuff going on. So I started figuring out how to do things on my own, and this counter became such a weapon for me because this was hard and I couldn't do it. So I didn't want to work on my weakness. I wanted to perfect the strength. And to me, I could go one or two steps this way and really get and momentum and go and do it. And then I, I just scrapped the other stuff. And that's what I love. That's the stuff I miss about playing the 20 minutes of ground balls on the backfield, going out at 7.15 yeah. in, in the morning with Glenn Hubbard. And I'm like, Five minutes into it, Glenn's like, scrap that. You're right. not doing that. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you this. Like, that's what works. So I was, I, I would say, like, the way you teach and the fact that I kind of got into the coaching at the youth level, it's you can't cookie cut this stuff. Some guys want to do things one way that feel comfortable for them. I was just, I thought it was a great kind of example of two amazing infielders and Robbie Cano. We're not knocking them. We're just saying they hadn't worked together, and had they, I think that double play gets turned, and I don't expect that to happen again. I'd like to throw this in, too, because the shortstop side, I think the shortstop position is a harder position to play at the big league but level. But the angles are all coming. But they are Let's coming. Get it. But when you're playing short, though, you don't have this opportunity to ever Good knock point. it down and do that. But at second base, we're doing something a little bit abnormal than we've ever done before, because it's always easier to go glove side. 
And as soon as we start going the other way, when I work with the 10-year-olds, the 11-year-old kids, I introduce this one, I introduce this, we do a little box drill going around the square, and you'll find the kids, some kids do this natural. Natural. And then you say, hey, this one? Go ahead and scrap that. Other kids are throwing the ball out there, and they go, okay, let's put that counter in your back pocket for a while, work on this one because it's really good, perfect that. So it's just one of those things that the fundamental approach should be there. It's an uphill feed, present the ball to your partner all the time, and then figure out what's best for you with those two kind of parameters laid out for you. Be coachable. I feel like Lauren Shahadi was coachable. I don't know about row flow. Well, she's not here, so, <laughs> you know, punctuality and uh, attendance, clearly areas that need to be addressed. Robert, were you coachable? I was so coachable.